Good morning YouTube and welcome to the weekend. Uh, today's video is going to be some uh, tips and tricks for selling bullion on eBay and I'm going to get that and get right to that in a minute. Uh, first just a quick word about the market. All right, I think that you can uh, you can certainly buy low premium bullion here if you want to. Uh, the kilo bars represent about the best value. I uh, had a nice bounce in the uh, stock market, but I do believe it's a counter trend rally. And I think everything I said last week is still true. All right, moving on. So let's say you've got some coins that you no longer want in your stack. Let's say they're five ounce lunar um, coins from the Perth Mint, but they're not as hot as they used to be. And uh, at the LCS or on JM Bullion, they'll pay you about 120 bucks each. But let's say that you'd rather sell them on eBay, and this is a listing I had, uh, for $185. Okay, so is that compelling? Is there a big enough difference between $185 and $121? To, uh, to pique your interest in eBay. Let's talk about it. All right, I'm not gonna go through the technical steps of how to set up a seller's account, but it's easy enough if you click, click the link below and uh, you wanna register as a seller. Okay, just recognize that you'll have to connect your banking information, your credit card information, etc. if you want to be a seller, and you'll have to figure out what kind of account you want. What you guys wanna know about is the fees, right? All right, here, here are the fees for, um, if, you're not, if you don't have a store, coins, paper money, bullion, they're gonna charge you 12.9% uh, with some nuance about really high valued coins but 12.9% is going to be your seller fee, and that is really high. So what do you do about that? Do you just swallow that? No, I don't think so. I think um, what I would recommend if you're gonna do any substantial selling on eBay is a store subscription. All right, here are the different types of stores. Now I'm gonna recommend against the starter store, because uh, you get virtually no value for it and you still have to pay those high fees. The store that I'm going to recommend to you, again, if you're going to do any substantial selling, um, is the basic um, store subscription. Um, you can buy that for $21.95 a month. Um, or if uh, for a whole year or month by month twenty seven ninety five so let's say you want to dabble in this and you just pick up that store subscription for one month you've sunk twenty seven ninety five but what does that do to your fees um, when you start selling now starting off with that basic store subscription which I do not recommend you can see here the fee of 12.9% uh, percent is the same. You get a little deal on uh, insertion fees and and so forth. But in the basic store subscription, you have two different levels of fees. The first one is on coins uh, and paper money, sovereign bullion, etc. That is 8.8% up to $4,000, um, and then it drops down if you have a high value item. If you're just selling bullion in the bullion category, it's it's 7% and that drops after $1,500. So when people talk about the high fees on eBay for selling bullion, well, I don't think 7% is high. And of course, it'd be uh, lower if you sold uh, a high value item. So you just have to invest that $27 or $21 if you have a yearly subscription to access these lower fees. All right, um, there's a lot of misinformation about eBay because people like to generalize and say, you know, how high things are and use that as a reason uh, not, to, uh, not to try new things. And if you're like me, uh, you want to lower your cost and increase your profits. And every time you do that, um, it's a win. But something you should know is that the fees are charged on all on all costs uh, charged to the buyer, and that includes um, shipping costs. Okay, so if you charge the buyer for shipping costs, you still have to pay fees on the shipping costs. Um, sales tax is no longer an issue to the seller because eBay collects that for you and charges that to the buyer, but that's kind of behind the scenes now, and it has actually simplified things quite a bit. Uh, eBay basically replaced PayPal uh, with their own payment mechanism, which uh, made it, again, much cheaper 
Um, so that was a good move, uh, replacing PayPal, at least at this point in time. Okay, so you can do the math. Um, you take uh, my $185 sale, you subtract the 7%. I think it might have been more like 7.7. .7. Um, and they vary fees based on the level of the seller, and you can you can upgrade and downgrade as a seller depending on how well you follow their rules. Their rules are really, really hard to follow. Um, so you may pay a little more than 7%. But, uh, and I also pay for shipping. Okay, I always do free shipping in my listings um, just to make it more enticing. So you take the $185, you take out the 7 8%, you take out $5 for shipping. Um, and uh, you, you can see uh, I'm doing better than the LCS would offer and better than uh, JM Bullion would offer. Um, is that enough to make that worth your while? Well, if you're only selling one, you know, maybe not. But if you're selling five, um, you know, you, you, may, uh, you may be able to convert that profit into a few more ounces of silver. And, of course, my goal for uh, the Lunars, uh, which I don't really want Lunars in the stack anymore, um, would be to convert that into low-premium silver um, bullion. Okay, not coins, not sovereign coins. Uh, $2 over spot maximum um, silver bullion. Okay, that, that's what the LCS is going to want uh, if silver spikes to $50. Okay, they're, they're not going to care that you're coming in with a big, beautiful lunar. But people who collect them and enjoy them, you know, and love them, uh, definitely want one of those coins. It's just that uh, when the time is right, you want to be able to hit the LCS with a big stack of weighty bullion. Okay, so maybe you say, hey, Louie, that sounds good. Uh, I'm going to give that a try. Well, there is something you really need to know, and unfortunately, this is going to discourage about 80% of all sellers. Um, I've already cleared this gauntlet myself, and I'll, I'll tell you what I've done. But here are the new rules, and unfortunately, uh, you used to be able to sell $20,000 or 200 transactions on eBay in a calendar year before they would issue you the dreaded 1099K. All right, a 1099, if you don't know, um, is sent to you and is sent to the... Uh, the IRS indicating that you have received income. In 2022, um, this, uh, the tax uh, plan has changed, uh, much more restrictive, and now it is $600. If you sell over $600 uh, on eBay, uh, I think in virtually any category, you're going to get a 1099. All right, um, and for many people, uh, if you've ever gotten 1099s, uh, you know there are implications, uh, and that means that the government knows that you have sold something, and they will want to know what your profit was. All right, here is the dreaded Schedule C, the profit or loss from a, a business operation. And the gist of this is that you have um, proceeds, right, net proceeds after expenses, um, and then you have a cost. So uh, you would need to be able to substantiate the cost of the coins you sold, and the difference between the cost and the net proceeds will be your profit. All right, and uh, it's a tough schedule, and uh, I would not take that lightly if you want to embark on this. It's kind of like in for an inch, in for a mile. So if you're going to sell a little bit, keep it under $600. If you're going to sell a lot, then you might as well sell a lot. There are some advantages to having a business, a home business. I'll get into those later. All right, so like I said, um, you do uh, have the $600 threshold. Um, in 2021, um, and of course, you know, they'll, they'll be eventually combing your bank accounts for all transactions, so expect uh, this kind of scrutiny to come directly into your personal lives from the government. Um, but for selling on eBay, uh, you know, you're already there. Uh, for those of you that don't like giving out personal information, like your social security number, well, um, you know, you got to give out your social security number, you have to give out your banking number, 
Um, of course, you'll need a credit card to pay fees. So eBay will know everything about you. If that makes you nervous, then uh, it's definitely not for you. Uh, you may want to try peer-to-peer, -peer, perhaps on Instagram. I see a lot of people selling on Instagram at highly discounted prices. Uh, you would do a cash uh, Zelle transfer. And then, of course, if the person had good uh, a good reputation, they would send you, they would likely send you your coins. But there's no protection there. And honestly, I think that party is going to come to an end uh, at some point. Um, I can't imagine why um, our highly invasive government is going to be allowing people to do cash sale transactions um, through Instagram or Facebook or where you know other social media platforms without uh, busting the people that do that. Um, I don't like doing it because I don't want that target on my back. I want to be legit. All right, and because I do that, my store, you know, sells a fair amount, and, uh, you know, I'm just in the legit category. Okay, so some other things that you may want to know. Okay, again, for those of you that haven't uh, stopped watching this video already because it's too hard, um, you may need a business license, and uh, depending on how invasive your state is, mine, uh, my state and my county and my city are highly invasive, so you would not want to have a home business without having a business license. All right. That also triggers the need for a reseller certificate through the Franchise Tax Board here in my state. Um, neither one of those are really expensive, but they do require some annual reporting and renewal of your business licenses. Again, you want to be either you know dabbling in this or you want to be all the way in. But if you have a real business, a Schedule C, 1099K, you're going to want a business license. You're going to want a reseller certificate. There can be some advantages to having those things as well, but that's you know, when you get into the highly advanced uh, stacking, collecting, selling area. I won't go into those now. Um, now, as I mentioned, um, you know, there will be a Schedule C. Um, you know, there are perks to a Schedule C. And, for example, um, I have uh, just a little bit of income from uh, YouTube. I have some other income sources through, you know, affiliate codes and whatnot. It's pretty small. Um, I also um, spend money. So, for example, I have the, uh, the YouTube uh, subscription that eliminates ads for 12 bucks a month or something. I find YouTube is much more enjoyable without the ads, so I pay for that. I also watch the markets carefully, and I subscribe to, um, you know, fee-based uh, fee-based information. That's a cost I have. The shipping materials I have. I bought a new computer uh, recently. I also pour silver. I built a tough shed to do that and outfitted that. I have equipment. I have depreciation. I have utility expense. Um, so uh, what I'm able to do is offset um, a lot of those expenses um, against the income I make on coins. And some of those expenses I would have, honestly, even if I, you know, didn't have a home-based business, because they're things I love. I love being on YouTube. Um, you know, I love making silver. I needed a new computer anyway, but I do make videos for you guys. So it is part of my home business. And um, those expenses uh, dramatically offset my income. So I don't know if you uh, you know look at things the way I do, but uh, having a legitimate home business uh, will definitely uh, give you an opportunity for write-offs. Uh, there's a mileage write-off, you know, uh, if you're driving around to scope out the LCSs. Um, but you need to be a record keeper, and you need to assume that you will get audited. Okay, and I like I said, I'm 100% legit. I record my my sales, I record my profits, 
uh, whether or not I get a 1099 because um, last year PayPal had a glitch or something. We didn't even get a 1099 from PayPal. But, um, you know, in being totally legit, you can go into worlds that you can't if you're operating kind of off the grid. And off the grid means your profits uh, will be off the grid as well and will be lower. Um, you know, that LCS that picks up your lunar coins for spot will turn around and sell them on eBay, okay? Because they are legit, they have a business, and uh, they can capitalize on those profits. They also have expenses that they can write off. So it's, it's kind of a, a question of whether you want to graduate to the next tier because, um, you know, for some of us, you can be talking about tens of thousands of dollars, for some hundreds of thousands of dollars, and um, being able to adjust your stack to be the most advantageous going forward, um, as well as correct mistakes you may have made in the past that are strangling you at the moment and you don't know what to do with them and you can't bear to you know, give them away for the melt value. Um, I just think it, it provides an outlet that is really hard to find um, you know, in, uh, in the off-the-grid market. All right, I think I'm going to wrap up the video there. Those were some of my tips and tricks. Um, I talked a little bit about um, seller status. Um, I would say don't get into this if you are not a serious person. Only serious people do well on eBay. Your reputation has got to be 100%. You have got to ship your items uh, faster than you said you would. It's got to be packaged so there's never any damage. You've got to put tracking numbers on it. Don't bother with insurance because insurance does not cover coins and bullion. So um, if you're thinking, you know, that's that raises your price, um, your cost. Yes, it would, but it also wouldn't pay off if you had a loss. Um, I will say also that the USPS is highly dependable for delivery. If something is stolen out of someone's mailbox, you may take that loss and you may find a scammer. And, uh, you know, but uh, my experience is 99 out of 100 times, everything goes fine. And if you're dealing in smaller transactions and you lose one coin, so be it. That's, um, you know, again, that's a write-off, right? That's part of your um, spoilage or shrinkage or losses or whatever. So um, if you're selling highly valuable items, you know, four coin gold sets, then you're, you're going to want to go registered mail or something that is absolutely foolproof um, and can be insured. So I don't recommend selling really expensive things on eBay because then if you take a loss, um, it's going to be catastrophic. But uh, do, I, do I get heartburn from shipping a $180 item? No. 99 out of 100 times, it works out just fine. eBay works well. They've got discounts on shipping. USPS works well. Um, you know, I'm, if the economy goes into total free fall, there may be more uh, fraud. Uh, you know, so you'd have to watch out for that. But it's just a question of are you willing to accept those risks? Are you a serious person? Or um, if you're just going to mess around with it, you're going to get a bad seller rating, your fees are going to go up, and nobody's going to buy your product. Uh, when you price your products, be sure that you're on the low end of the prices. I like buy it now uh, more than I like auctions. That's just me. I try to stay on the low end of pricing because what do I want? I want to make a sale. I don't want to make a statement that I have the most products in inventory at the highest price. Um, so, uh, you know, when my profit margin is up around 30%, I'm selling. Okay, and if that puts me uh, as the lowest seller of that particular coin, so be it. I'll be the lowest seller because I'm looking for sustainable um, returns. I'm, I'm not looking for home runs generally. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about all I'll say on that. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, again, I think 80% of you probably tuned out when I said Schedule C and 1099, and I totally get that. And it can make you nervous letting the government know that, uh, you know, you sell coins. I'm sure that would make a lot of people nervous. But I have so much invested in my, I'll call it inventory, that uh, I, I drank the Kool-Aid and I am all in. 
and these profits add up over time. There's a reason that I have a stack as big as I have, and it's not just because I, I've spent a lot on silver. A lot of it is horse trading. All right, so I'd love to hear your thoughts, your experiences. I know most of you will say something negative, but I was asked to do this video um, for people that want to consider this, and this is my um, considered advice to all of you. I hope you have a great weekend. I'd love to hear your comments. Please throw me a like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next week.